Welcome in to sportsbookreview.com. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is week 11, the college football show for the offseason. And it's not really the offseason. We, we've talked about this every week. I'm going to continue to say it because there is no offseason. Sports runs year-round. This sport particularly runs year-round. We are in the middle of the FCS football season. We are moving into, let me see, week 7 of the FCS season. Lots to go on with that. We're getting closer and closer to the playoffs, which... I think it's going to be a lot of fun this year. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But there is always news going on, and we have some uh, big-time stuff to discuss today. So, before we get started, go ahead and remind you all, your one-stop shop, your one website that you have to visit is sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. All the stats, all the news, all the predictions, all the everything that you could possibly need is going to be right there on that website so make sure that you go ahead and bookmark that site, visit it frequently, and you can just click the link in the description below to get there if you don't want to listen to me say it again. But sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF is the website. If you are watching the video, go ahead and hit the like button for us. It's that little thumbs up button right below us. And make sure that you are subscribed. You can hit that little notification button, the bell that's right there. It will let you know when we go live. It will let you know when we have new shows up, etc. We have a great crew here at Sportsbook Review. We do basketball, NBA, college basketball, whatever. We're in the middle of the NCAA tournament. Lots to go on with that. NFL, of course, Donnie and Kyle, our dudes over on the other side of the football spectrum, and hockey, everything else, UFC, boxing, whatever. We got it all covered right here at Sportsbook Review. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and that you like this video. Jump in the comments. Let us know. We would love to hear from you. If you like something about the show, tell us. If you don't, tell us. We'll try and fix it. Whatever. You know, make it easy on you. Uh, if you would like to contact us without signing into YouTube, you can certainly do that as well. I am on Twitter at GaryWCE. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. Or you can email us if you want to go the old school route. If you don't have a Twitter account, you can email Gary at winningcureseverything.com. And I'm Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Let's go ahead and fire into this. We have got some big news that happened last week, late last week. First things up, Georgia wide receiver George Pickens. He suffered a non-contact torn ACL in spring practice last week. Now, they are having miracles in, in uh, medical advancement, right? Correct. <clears throat> I don't think that you can come back from a torn ACL in time to play a fall season if you, if you tear it in the spring, right? No, I don't think so. I think the earliest he might be able I mean, to We're back. talking miracle fast, I think, national championship. And that's yeah. if his team's playing there. Or may, maybe playoff. Right? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, that's yeah, I mean, we're you're looking January 1st. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around there. Even then. I have I no mean, idea is, what he would be at that point in time. Yeah. I and mean, then it, if he's looking to go play on Sundays, is it worth it to try to play that game? I think he might would come back if it was a playoff scenario. If it's not, there's no there's no reason. Well, right? no. if not, Yeah, no. Other than that, there's you're no reason. You're not going to play reason. in a regular bowl game. But even, it, like, Jalen Waddell did it for Alabama. But no, but that's I, not this. That's, that's not, not that's record not return on I don't know. I mean, injury. He, he broke his uh, he broke his leg yeah. against Tennessee at the end of October and was back playing in the national championship game on January 11th. So that's fairly quick turnaround. Yes, but almost every athlete and every surgeon in the world will tell you they'd rather the bone break than a tendon tear. This is true. Meniscus problems hamstringy, like soft issue tender, you know, tissue injuries are always a hundred times worse than bones breaking. Correct. Bones, because you could do an x-ray, is the bone healed or is the bone not? If yeah. it's healed, you're good. You can't do that with the ACL or any of these Correct. other soft tissue things. You can and even see then, if there's he, inflammation, but you can't really tell And you can't get back to like. game speed. Like no. it's, That's going to be almost impossible. It, this is a devastating blow. Don't let Absolutely. anybody kid you. Um, George has got talent. But I don't know that they've got this talent, right? Like, he was the number one guy for JT Daniels. Yes. 23 catches, 373 yards. That's 16.2 yards per catch with JT Daniels last year. Had four touchdowns in the last four games. He's going to be missed. Big time. Um, because now JT Daniels has to get comfortable with somebody else. And Well, well I mean, got, he's got all offseason to do that. Agreed. But you, he already had a connection with Pickens. And Pickens was obviously... I mean, the highest-rated recruit out of yeah. all those. Yeah, he's and, just a freak. And he'd been there for a while. No, he's just a, he's just a hell of an athlete. 
So this is a this is a big 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 loss for them, especially with them wanting to open up that offense more under Todd Munkin in his second season as offensive coordinator. Uh, Kirby Smart, like I, I think he understands you have to be able to throw the football. He he started to get to that point at the end of last season. Got more comfortable with JT Daniels coming off of an injury himself yep. last year. Yeah, who knows? I mean, who knows what's gonna what's gonna come of this? They obviously do still have talent at the position, but it's not proven. And well, it's not biggest, him. Yeah, it's it's not him. It's not him. They they might look like world beaters, but I'm never of the opinion that a team is better without a guy who's an amazing athlete. I don't care the outcome. This is a so. very valid point. It's you you do have a valid point. Yeah. Yet we argue about this sometimes, but yes, I, yes. I do see your side of it. Moving on from there, topic number two, quarterback Chandler Morris. This is Chad Morris's son. He is not eligible to play immediately at TCU because Lincoln Riley still has not released him from, uh, I guess, what, his scholarship? He hadn't released him from Oklahoma. Yeah. It, Gary Patterson was kind of irritated about this. Rightfully so. Should players be allowed to transfer inside their conferences? Yes. I think we both agree on that. Extra caveat changes nothing morally (laughs) at all. I mean, at all. The bottom line is is this: Chandler Morris is not going to play at Oklahoma so long as Spencer Rattler is healthy, right? The other side of this is I don't know that he's going to play at TCU either because he's coming in behind Max Duggan. The point of it is he didn't want to be at Oklahoma anymore, so trying to to hold the kid out for another season, I don't know what that accomplishes. I'm gonna tell other- you. I'm gonna tell you what I would do. Here's the rule I would make right here because because I, I, this is this might come across as just ridiculous because I just thought of it as you're talking. You said you said because, when you said Oklahoma hasn't released him yet, so he's still whatever. You can hold him hostage to where he can go to TCU, but he can't play. You lose that scholarship. That's interesting. If you want to keep the kid from going, you're going to pay his tuition, his scholarship. You're now paying the scholarship for that one year for TCU, and you go down a scholarship. So if you get 43, 48 scholarships, what is it in college football? Uh, 85. 85. Jesus. <laughs> Way off. You get 85, you now have 84. That's it. That's a very I'm okay with way. it. Yeah. If he was a scholarship player, which is the only reason it matters, then if you don't release him, then you're just going to play a man down scholarship wise. I'm okay. I'll, that's the only compromise I'm willing to make. And I actually don't even think that's that big of a compromise because you know how I feel about scholarships. Well, agree. It's all bullshit funny money. It's it's making the kids shop at the company store. It is they're not it's not real money. All these schools will tell you every scholarship cost us 64,000. You made that price up. Yeah. 5 years ago that scholarship only cost 30 something thousand. And it doubled because you just charge more. You just decided that it was going to yeah, cost that much. So, um, so Lincoln Riley went through the difference, right? Because a lot of people talk to him about, well, you just took a whole slew of kids from Tennessee. That's and you've, right. you've brought in transfers from all across the country. What's the deal here? And he explained, well, those are coming in from out of conference. It's not a team that we have to play regularly. It's not a team that we even have on the schedule in the next however long. And that's what a lot of these coaches do is they That's they the old the school way of thinking. Exactly. It's a very, very old school way, way of thinking. Um, when it's inside the Big 12, they, they got to play TCU every year. And I understand that part of it, but it, you can't look at things the same way that we did even five years ago. That's right. It's a uh, different like, world. These kids are, for better or for worse, free agents. And Chandler Morris, now we've talked – on here and on our other show about uh, all of the the kids that are stuck in the transfer portal that don't have a home, yep. right? Well, this kid's got a home. He's got a home. He's got, actually got a home. Hang on. If they take the risk of leaving the school they're at, giving up the scholarship, yep, and now they're floating around in the ethos without a home, if they ever find a home, you can't say, oh, well, I'm glad you found a home. It can't be there. It can't be there. Yeah, that's but that's basically what they're trying to do. That's exactly what they're trying so, to do. Lincoln Riley, who is supposed to be the new age, if you're so afraid guy, of these guys, then then what do you care? Yeah, like it, it, you shouldn't. It 
if you're so afraid of him, then play him. How's that? If you're not afraid, and of I him, understand he's not Spencer Rattler, then then obviously, then why did you care if you play against him? You have Spencer Rattler. Yeah, I mean this should be easy, right? Should be easy. I don't understand it. I don't know why we keep having to go through this, and yet I'm sure that we will talk about this over and over oh, and over yeah. again. It oh, will these continue. coaches are going to give us a hundred opportunities to do this. Oh yes, yes they will. All right, moving on. Topic number three. I don't know that you're going to like me bringing this. That's one up. fine. No, bring it up. It needs to be talked about. It's nice. Ed Orgeron okay. had a press conference last week, and he admitted some interesting things. Okay. I, I guess we could say okay. things that you do not normally hear from a head coach. Now, on one side, it is. Incredibly nice to hear somebody be so transparent, so out in the open with these things, right? But some of the things were maybe a little troubling, and they were taken okay by the fan base because he wrapped them up in a really big, nice, positive ribbon bow, right? He, he made it all sound good because, you know, it, he's, he's going to work on things. He's going to fix it. Everything's going to be fine. But he admitted that he hired coaches last season that he had never interviewed. That he didn't interview. Right. That he didn't interview. Okay. Uh, he admitted that the coaches that he hired, the coordinators, fourth, fifth option, you know, they weren't first, second, third, whatever. He admitted all of this. He stated that he's basically going to micromanage uh, everything inside the program going forward, hands-on, watching every piece of film. Nothing's going to slip by him anymore. All this, which you can take it a multitude of ways. I looked at it as that's not what Coach O was known for. He is a CEO guy. He's supposed to be. I think you still be a CEO guy. guy. Just because you're watching all the film and stuff doesn't mean you're getting involved. You're just seeing what everybody's doing. Right. The but the other side of this is, so he wasn't watching all the film before. Like this is, I felt like that should have been something that he was doing. The whole time as the as the head coach, right? I, so, I understand what you're saying. I'm going to tell you this is not because it's my guy, because you know that. I'll, right. I'll be honest. I I think very few of these coaches that are coaches of these huge programs, not not smaller school programs, but right. these mo- monster program. The football. How many how many employees do you think are employed under the football? world at a major university like an LSU in Alabama Texas and Auburn, Texas whatever. yeah um I would go with over 100 right yeah I was going to say closer to 200 okay yeah. over 100 over 100 one one person's not interviewing all those people one person's not so you so we used okay, the word coaches here, Hang on, I, so he used the word coaches right yes so he used the word coaches he's a CEO guy right he had an OC that he trusted yeah he had a Steve. DC that he trusted so if that guy wanted to hire a linebackers well, coach, oh, hang on. If that guy wants to hire a linebackers coach, do I need to interview the linebackers coach, or can he hire his linebacker coach? Okay, you do have a very valid point. All right, a very valid. Do you point. do you think Steve Emsinger, who was a great quarterback at LSU, if he wanted to hire a quarterback coach, would he need? Now I'm sure O has final say on all this, but O. Doesn't need to sit down with that. His time is not spent doing those things. His time is better spent for the universe. So I think him saying this makes everybody step back and say, holy crap, he wasn't doing this already? I don't think a lot of coaches are doing this. I think coaches that have a specialty on one side of the ball are very inside that side of the ball. And I think the other side of the ball, they hire people and they try. I'll ask you this. And I know this is a guy I crap on a lot, but the national perspective is he's a great coach. How many defensive coaches do you think Dabo Sweeney has interviewed? Ah, uh, that's a very good question. I would, I'd be willing, man. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I'm going to bet it's, I bet it's all of them. I bet, I, it's not. I bet he has. I bet it's not. I, I bet Saban interviews all of them. I bet it's I bet, not. But I, I, I will tell you this. I just disagree with that. I think that they look at it differently. Like, it, it has to be somebody that fits in the culture that they are wanting. I don't think that Dabo, Saban, Urban Meyer, Ryan Day, I, like, I, et cetera, I, I don't think that they delve out those responsibilities, I those do. hiring responsibilities. I do. Because I think they hire somebody, and then they expect them to do their job. 
And then that person has the right time. And it, it might not be a position coach, but it, it could be multitude of other coaches out there. All right. That they're just not involved in. Okay. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm going to bet at the level of college football, there's an offensive line coach, okay? And then I'm going to bet there's a coach that just specializes on centers and special because that's a different position than tackle, right? Right. Okay, right. I, so do you think that Saban interviews the guy that's coaching just the centers? So he's, he's, he's basically, you've got your OC, you've got your offensive line coach, and then you've got this guy. And you think he's, he's worried about that. Or does he say, hey, that guy's not doing his job, fire him and get another one? Because I don't have all day long to to to, to interview all messages. of these guys. Have you ever hired anybody? Uh, no, I have not had okay. hiring people takes a lot of time. Yeah. Sitting down and doing interviews takes a lot of time. Okay. If you trust the people that you work with, and I'm gonna tell you if I had to guess, we hired people that I didn't interview. If I had to guess those people we're offensive people because he's not an offensive guy. And the guy running the offense, he trusts with his life. I I honestly took it as... Which is why I asked Dabo and Brett Vittable's situation. Well, Because so, I'm going to tell you that if Brett called Dabo and Dabo's on the beach somewhere doing whatever the hell he wants and says, hey, I got this guy. He's got a couple other offers. I want to make a move. Dabo's going to say hire him. You might be right about that. Dabo's going to say hire him. Dabo's not going to tell Brett Vittables a, a damn thing. No, you're right about that. Because if uh, Brett leaves, that program goes to the shitter. I took it as, I took it as Bo Pelini. I took that. See, I as, don't because think I, it was defensive guys. I think that he, I think that they made an offer on Bo Pelini and and may not have actually interviewed him. I think mm. it was just a very quick. Hey, we're going to give you two point three million if you'll come back to LSU. No, the, the, like, okay. Now, so that if it's if that's the hire, then that was made above his head, and then you can't you possibly. can't fault him. And for then that. and then you have to start looking at okay, how is this athletic department actually run? Yeah, because right? that because I'll tell you that if if it's a DC situation and you think that's what it was, then that tells me that that move was made above his head. Because that I, happens all the time, by the way. Did he, did he all the time Canada? at other programs? You remember Matt Canada? Yeah, I wonder inherited. if he interviewed Matt Canada. He inherited Canada. Canada no, no, he was no, he Canada is is who he brought in because Insminger was his uh, offense coordinator. Oh, while Canada, he was, Matt Canada. That's right. Yeah. I was thinking. Okay, you were thinking Aranda. Yeah, yeah, Aranda. Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator that he had so many issues with after he hired him. No, in. I think Joe Oliva hired all. I think Joe Oliva hired that whole staff. That's interesting. I think he was hired to be a placeholder. Because Joe Oliva went into that hiring system. He wants to act like he's a damn hero. He went into that hiring system with one name. And he didn't get that name. And he said, well, what the hell? Well, we'll get Ed Orgeron. We'll just give it to Ed because he'll take it for nothing. And he did. And then we'll go get the offensive coordinator. And then I'll hire everybody. And then Joe, I, I think Joe Oliva hired that whole staff. I wouldn't doubt that. But I think the hiring, I would assume he had to interview Pelini. I don't tell me, think. Tell me this. I, coming off a national championship win, I don't think they would have went over his head and told him a DC to hire. No, but I, I don't I, believe I, that. But I do wonder if maybe he, after winning a national championship, and Aranda leaves, and he's like, "I need to go back to a four three defense." I think our defense could have been better with a four three, like I like to run, and I know the guy that knows how to run it is Bo Pelini. But that's not not interviewing a guy. If you know the guy, if if you ever get a big boy job somewhere. And, and you had an opening for something you know I would be good at. That's You're not going to call me in and have me go get a fresh shave and and put on a nice suit and dance me around in front of everybody. You're going to call me and say, hey, I got a job. Pack your shit. That's it. Okay. Okay. So I that's see, a different I situation. I think, it's a, I think it was an offensive thing. I think he trusted Steve. Now, I don't think that's a knock on Steve at all. No. Uh, but I think he was being open and honest about – well, I don't. I don't think the offense how, had, how had things, issues. Like, but no. But like, I think that's where the hiring is. A because he is a defensive guy, so so he kind of could care less about what's going on in the offense. And the and the guy running the offense, he trusted with his life. I mean, he trusted true. more than anybody else on that campus. Tell me, and the athletic department trusted as well. So if it didn't work out, and the AD said, "Who hired him, Ed?" He says, "Steve." They're gonna be like, "Oh, well, I ain't gonna go yell at Steve. Um, I would have yelled at you." I won't yell at Steve. That 
I think that's how that operation works. Does uh, does any of this clip, this press conference that happened with that orange run, does any of it scare you? Not at all. You don't think so? No. Okay. No. He's being honest. Yeah. But I don't. I, I, the, the I don't get bothered. Me. Here's the thing: the things that people say that they're not supposed to say never bother me because I kind of assume all this stuff is happening anyway. Which is why I told you I. I think 80% of these coaches who are ex now he's not even an expert on one side of the ball, but who are experts on one side of the ball, I 100% think they hire somebody to run the other side, and then they let them run the other side. I fully believe that because there's too many moving pieces. And if I'm not an expert in it, how the hell do I even know what I'm hiring? That's, that is a valid point. That is a valid point. How would Dabo know what a good defensive coach looks like? Or how would he know what a good offensive coach looks like, right? Like, it's it, if you're a good CEO, you just you you know. hire smart and you trust yeah. them to hire smart. I'm okay with that. I want to tell you this. I'm a, I'm a Patriots fan. I, I can 100% tell you that Bill Belichick hasn't interviewed everybody in that staff. Agreed. Once he's gotten to a point where he trusts Josh McDaniels with that offense, Bill, I mean, He's even shown it on those like NFL like after they win a Super Bowl and they follow the team around like videos of how Josh does his thing. Josh brings this in. Josh does this. Josh does that. and he's just like he, that guy doesn't even care what's happened on the offensive side of the ball. That's called trust. So a, I don't think that that doesn't bother me or did it, concern. Did me. it bother you uh, with you know announcing to everybody that you know he was like our fourth or fifth choice or whatever? Oh. But, everybody knows that. We saw all the names that they tried to go get. No, no, no. I understand. Right? I understand. But I wonder what it's like with uh, with the kids, like with the actual players. I don't right? think it's anything. I think you don't think they see that. I'm sure that some of them do. I think they all see it. I, I, I think just, these kids read and hear more than you and I ever could have when we were 18 years old. I just wonder what the implications are of being so honest. Right? I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, I'm, I, never, I, I'm never. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate the transparency, but <clears throat> I just wonder what the implications might be going forward of not necessarily this press conference, but now it just all being out in the open. That's what I wonder. I don't – so the hiring stuff was the only thing that was in the – like that he said that people probably didn't know, okay? Yeah. Which, like I said, once again, go ask me how many people I think Lane Kiffin's hired on the defensive side of the ball at, 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 LSU, at Ole Miss – or Mike Leach and defense. Just go ask me that. Because I, I think the answer is zero, by the way. I think they hired their coordinators, and then I think they let them run. Because those two guys don't know dick about defense. That's a valid point. So, that's the only thing that's shocking, quote-unquote. All this other stuff is we we saw the three or four guys that they went after before they finally made a hire. We saw it. Yeah. It happened openly and publicly. I mean, they, they thought they had Marcus Freeman. Done. Uh, we thought it was locked up and done. And then he took uh, Notre Dame. so Which is a better job. Is it? Yeah. I, I, I think it's a better job for him. I think it's a better job, period. You think Notre Dame is a better job than LSU? Yeah. I think, I think everybody in the country thinks that outside of Baton Rouge, too. I think that we might need to, next week, get into, I'm going to write this down. We need to get into what are the well, best a, jobs. Well, A, as a defensive coach, you're not going against Jimbo. You're not going against Lane. You're not going against Saban. You're not going against Leach. All right? I just I just named off four of the best off of Dan Mullen every year. Like, like you're not going against who they playing. USC. That, that Michigan offense scare you? No, not, not particularly, no. no. Okay. The, right. the, the, the home and home they got with Miami, that offense scares the hell out of you? Or would you not rather right play Lane Kiffin? You okay? You have a you, I, that's a better I, job. I, I see where you're coming from. Plus, from that aspect that's, I private, just wonder, that's private school money. Nobody really knows what that guy's making. That's I think point. that has a lot to do with those things. I I think everybody in the country thinks Notre Dame's a better job than LSU, and I'm an LSU fan. I don't know that I would agree with that. I th- oh, I think LSU the, is surrounded by talent. Notre Dame is harder to get into. Like I, I think it's easier to win. Oh, okay, uh, that's at, not what we asked. Is it easier to win? Nah. Three national championships, two decades, three different coaches. Yeah. No, LSU's easier to win. That doesn't make it a better job. Winning's not always the end goal, man. No, that's that's what I was saying. I think it's a better job for him. 
I think it's a better like job. For, period for Ed Orgeron. Oh no, like, I'm talking about see, for. I think it's a it's a dependent upon the person thing, no, right? Well, no, Ed would not fit in at Notre Dame, so that makes it a bad job for him. That would be a bad. There's a lot of places where Ed would not fit in well. Correct, and the, they would all be bad jobs. Freeman, I think Freeman would be a great DC anywhere, anywhere. in the country. Yeah, and Notre Dame is a better job than than LSU, so he took that one. We might have to dig into into you, this. We, you we, can. We might I'm, have to do this. I'm going to tell you this. You create a poll, and if you can get outside of our SEC ethos to get that poll answered, I, I'm going to bet it's 80 to 90 percent. Notre, Notre Dame over job. I, that is that is surprising. I just like people not knowing how much you make. That's, I, that's I, I want. Look I want to be paid by boosters and some of that cash that the government don't even know about. Let's let's talk about somebody that knew a little bit about cash right quick. Okay. Rest in peace, Howard Schnellenberger. Passed away at 87 years old. I'm going to go through this man's incredible, amazing, ridiculously uh, uh, storybook kind of life. Okay? Okay. He was a man's man, for everybody that doesn't know. Uh, used to wear a full suit on the sideline. Yep. Used to carry a pipe on the sideline. Like, he was smoking a pipe on the sideline of football games. Sure. It, it was a long time ago. Long time ago. Uh, 158, 151, and 3 in college. He was 4-13 and 13 in the NFL as a uh, as an NFL coach. Went 6-0 and in bowl games. 6-0. and Never lost a bowl game. 2-1 and in the NCAA 1AA playoffs, back when 1AA actually was a thing. Played for Bear Bryant at Kentucky. He was Bears offensive coordinator at Alabama from 1961 through 65. Won national championships with him there. Was an NFL assistant before getting the Baltimore Colts job in 1973-74. Was the Dolphins OC down in Miami from 79 to... Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's a different... I put the wrong notes on here. It Up until 1979. How's yeah. that? Yeah, 78 so, was the last year I believe, he was the Dolphins. I believe it was 75 through 79. Yes, uh, that's he was. Right. He was the Miami Hurricanes head coach from 1979 through 1983. He is credited with building the Hurricanes dynasty. That's right. He won the first national what championship. What we know of as the U. That's that's how it started. That's him. That was Howard Schnellenberger, 1983, won the national title. Then he resigned immediately to become part owner, president, general manager, and head coach of the USFL Miami team. And then a few months later, the team relocated to Orlando, and he was like, you know what? I'm good. Deuces. I want, I want to stay in Miami. However, yeah. the Hurricanes had already hired Jimmy Johnson. Yep. So they were not going back to Howard, even though he just won him a national championship. They said, mm, we're okay with Jimmy. Like, we'll, we'll keep Jimmy. And I think that ended up being all right. Well, it worked out okay. So 1985, two years later, he takes over as the Louisville head football coach. He had some... Really up and down seasons, whatever. And he took Louisville and ran over to Oklahoma in 1995. He had one controversy-riddled season at Oklahoma. And it wasn't NCAA rules. It wasn't anything like that. David Boren, the old president at Oklahoma, those two hit it off poorly from the very beginning. And, and he was out after one season. He, he resigned on his own yep. because he didn't like the way. In the middle that, of the season, right? No, no, no. He made it through the whole season. They went 5-5-1. Five, five, and one. Okay. Made it through the whole season. This was going to be a rebuilding job at that point. But went through all that, and Boren didn't like the way that Schnellenberger treated the players. But what Schnellenberger did was exactly what Bear Bryant and Gene Stallings and all them used to do. He, yeah, would, he was a mean cuss. He would, well, here's the thing. He would pound into them in spring practice and in fall practice. And then once you got into the season, it was perfectly, perfectly fine. I read an old interview with Garrick McGee. You remember Garrick McGee? No. He was Bobby Petrino's uh, offensive coordinator, okay. ended up taking the UAB job, like all, all this different kind of mess, right? So McGee uh, was the quarterback at Oklahoma, and he got beat out. I believe the kid's name was Eric Taylor. He was a freshman. Garrick McGee was a senior the year that Schnellenberger came in, and he was unseated by a freshman. In his senior season, and McGee said, look, he was rough as hell on us. Like, in spring and in, in early in fall camp, he said, once the season got here, like, incredible coach. Like, I thought it was great. Like, there was no issue. But he really worked us. And David Boren 
did not like that way of going about it. It was it was the tough guy mentality against you know the the new school can't work them too hard, you know whatever. And there there were two instances of guys uh, getting heat exhaustion, um, and that kind of became an an issue, right? So controversy kind all of that became kind of stuff. an issue. Yeah, it it was a little bit of a problem. But he got back into coaching in wouldn't have worked in twenty twenty, right? Certainly not. Okay. Certainly not. Um, but he got back into coaching at uh, uh, Florida International. I'm sorry, Florida, Florida Atlantic. Atlantic. Sorry, in 2001. Coached them to the one AA playoffs in 2003. Oversaw their move to Division One, which is now considered FBS. They were in the Sun Belt Conference starting in 2005. Won two bowl games with them. Started them off and got their first two bowl wins ever. Then retired after a 1-11 and season in 2011. Uh, he was phenomenal. He was a, a little bit of a cartoon character, but, man, was he a hell of a coach. One hell of a coach. So, uh, to Howard Schnellenberger, rest in peace, and thank you for the memories. We'll say that. So, <laughs> moving on from there, uh, a guy that is not gone yet, but is, uh, is leaving his position, that would be Wisconsin's Barry Alvarez, who has decided that he is going to retire as the AD in Madison, Wisconsin, for the Badgers, at the age of 74. Did you know he was only 74 years old? No, but that didn't surprise me. I'm, I'm really bad at that game. He, uh, he had 16 teams win national championships under him. Okay. Uh, six in women's hockey, five in women's lightweight rowing. Football and men's basketball programs produced 15 consecutive years of playing in a bowl game and reaching the NCAA tournament. That's an NCAA record. Uh, the Badgers won 73 conference championships under him, regular season and tournaments combined. And he was the Wisconsin football coach from 1990 through 2005. I did not realize this. He retired at age 57. That is super young. And and we looked at it back then as, ah, that makes sense. Like, time to retire. Like, and he just I just moves think he always seat. looked his, the, like the age he is. That's it. I, 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 I've never paid attention. I mean, I just to, always thought he was an old guy. But that's I thought what I, he was that's a what really old guy for like 20-something years. That's what I'm saying. He, when he retired initially, I didn't think he was 57. No. I thought he was like late 60s. Yeah, I did too. Like, in, just in my head, he had been there forever. He was just an old guy. It was time to, to move on up the next thing. And then when he's done, he's done. He's 74 years young, man. Like, he is, it, he's four, no, five years older than Nick Saban right now. That's it. Like, that is insane to me. So, he, uh, he won three Rose Bowls in his tenure uh, with Wisconsin. He went 1-10 in, in his first season in 1990, went 5-6, and six, and then 5-6 and six again. I think that would probably get you fired nowadays. Probably. Um, and then in his fourth season, broke through, went 10-1-1, one one, won a Rose Bowl in 1993, finished the season ranked number five in the country, ended up winning three more Rose Bowls as it went along, and, uh, and he's come back twice as an interim coach, 2012-2014, but he is done. I think the COVID year, I, remember, he was the most vocal. I know. I, I think the COVID year, he was just like, you know so, what, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I, hate, I hate that this, like, relationship ended this way, okay? Now, he doesn't know I exist. But <laughs> this is a guy I really liked a lot. And I've tried to not make too many big uh, sweeping assumptions, A, off of a, you know, a weird year and a weird season. People are just, I guess, trying to make the best decision they know how to make. I thought, I thought he did a putrid job. Of, I mean, I just thought he just he wouldn't fight for his team, but he fought. I mean, he was just the definition of the scapegoat, just the yes man, the whipping boy. That anything the Big to get Ten Ohio wanted. State into, he did whatever the they had to do to get Ohio State in, but wouldn't make those same arguments to help benefit his school that he's the athletic director of. Yeah. And that's my problem. This is not a what's best for the conference is best for all of us situation. This is no, 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 no. If you're going to make those arguments at the end of the season, why the hell weren't you making them at the beginning of the season fighting for your guys? I agree. And he didn't do it. It really rubbed me the wrong way. I felt like, and, and it's a sweeping judgment that I'm sure in a year or two I'll look back on and say this is not okay. But it, I felt like this guy's just in the pocket of the Big Ten. And he well, is the it, most respected AD in the in the Big Ten. 
I think that I don't think that's questionable. I, I don't think you, that's questionable. Yeah, you might be right about you that. I was about to say you look like you're about to die. I don't know that that's. Well, questionable. no, I was trying to go through all the other ads, and I don't think he's, any of the other ads were. None were, of them have been around nearly yeah. as long as he has, but also he's been a pretty consistent model of good calls. Yeah, and I felt like somebody got to him and said, "You're going to take this one." Well, I we need that, you to go out there. So, we need you to say these things. And I think I, he I did think, them. I think we see. And I would have told him to blow it out their ass. I think we see different sides of people when, like, the pandemic, nobody had ever seen anything like nobody, this. No, that's right. And, and he that's had never. That's 100% right. In, in 17 years of being an AD, he had never encountered. He's now dealing with things he never thought he'd right. have to deal with in his life. So he couldn't he, imagine in his greatest horrors. Right. So, so I do wonder because, like, Wisconsin, I don't think, I think he would have been fighting for them. Had they not lost like the the second game or the third game or whatever, right? But like, maybe they lost the second or third game because he didn't have his guys. Agreed. They did that without their quarterback. I, I understand, but that's a, that's a whole different thing. That's changing other rules and and when I I get that. I'm talking about like making it to the Big Ten championship, all that kind of stuff that would have provided them more money. Um, the Ohio State thing, getting them into the playoff, getting them wherever. I I think that he fought for that specifically. Because the payout from getting into the playoff is so massive. I understand Like, that. it is massive. Because then you get a, a team in the playoff, I, and then you get a Rose Bowl team as well. I acknowledge, I acknowledge that there is a financial benefit there that is huge. Right. Okay. So that's why I, I wonder, like, it, it, my, it looks my, bad to us. My, based issue, on my issue is 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 your, your word and your integrity has to be worth something. And at the end of your life, at the end of your career... Is the money going to matter, or is your integrity going to matter? Like, I if wonder, you're at the beginning of your career, t- take the money. Just <laughs> take the damn money, because something's <laughs> going to happen at the end of it to, to cause you to screw up and people to hate you. If you're around long enough, eventually you're going to fall and be a, be a, be a, uh, you know, oh, God, I'm totally just butcher that. It's all but, good. <laughs> but, yeah, like, you're going to be seen as the bad guy at some point in time. So yeah. just sell your soul and take the money early. You're going to retire. This is the end of your career. And you're going to go out a sellout to a lot of people in the country. I, do, so I don't think I'm I'm the only one that sees it this way. No, I, I agree with you. I agree. I, I do think, uh, so he was, he had planned to announce his retirement and it was going to be like later on, right? It's down the road, whatever. That's right. And just today when we were recording this, we record on, on Monday evenings, um, he hasn't. He hadn't announced, but it's been reported that he's going to push this thing up. It's he's yeah. going to be done in in a couple of weeks. Like it's. And it's I wish be him soon. the best retirement. And like I yes. said, I grew up loving out. Barry, my issue is is my entire life, my entire childhood. The one Big Ten team I liked was always Wisconsin. Yeah. I knew who this man was, even though I didn't follow all of college football. Big. It was just the local SEC stuff and the Memphis stuff. I knew who Wisconsin was, though. Yeah. And I liked Wisconsin. And I knew who Barry Alvarez was. Well, it was the style of play. It was, yeah. It was no, everything. I was, yeah, I was, it was. That was offensive line you. Yes. It was It was the one thing that being a fat kid playing offensive line in, in high school and not getting a lot of attention from girls, I knew if I went to, Wisconsin, went to Wisconsin and played, then, then they would be swooning all over me more than the quarterback. That's just what happened at Wisconsin. That's true. And, and, and it was a magical place because of that. Um, so, you know, it's just – at last year he really pissed me off. I, he really disappointed me. I think a lot Guys of Guys I've people, looked up to a lot over the last year really disappointed me. A lot of people were very irritated <laughs> with a lot of different things about the Big Ten. Uh, but about everything, really, throughout the country, all during that pandemic season, right? And and who knows what this season is going to look like? We got variants now. Have you heard about this crap? I'm okay. I'm okay now. with <laughs> you being wrong on something. I just didn't like the fact that you would fight for a team you're supposed to hate and not your guys. Yeah, I can I can understand that. that if you if Wisconsin never had a COVID issue and he fought for Ohio State, I would almost expect it and understand it. That doesn't bother me. It's the fact that your team lost a bunch of games early because you had to play games with massive chunks of your team out. And it wasn't overlooked, and it wasn't given an excuse. And it, what, they didn't relook at the rules to try to get your guys back faster, yeah. even though we knew it was safe. 
he just stuck. Oh, those are the rules are rules, and they can't be changed until Ohio State needs them, and then we're going to change them all. The the documentaries that will be made about this season, I cannot wait to anyway, see. I hope that they get real answers that was from some of these long, people. Long, long. Uh, it's a, hey, it, it really, really wasn't that long. Really wasn't that long. You're all good. Moving on from there, um, Alabama tight ends and special teams coach Jay Graham resigns due to mental health issues. Uh, now this was a little bit surprising. Graham, age 45, was with Jimbo Fisher at Florida State and at Texas A&M from 2013 through 2019. Uh, got a raise, went over and spent 2020 as running backs coach at Tennessee under Jeremy Pruitt. And then, of course, came over to Alabama uh, after the national championship, After, at, honestly, before Pruitt was fired and all that good stuff. He came over to Alabama. Uh, but he released a statement last week, said he will seek professional help immediately and, quote, spend more time with loved ones. He said, while mental health issues are not new, they are often difficult to discuss, especially for coaches, athletes. Um, a part of the statement read, it said, I, I hope my voice inspires others that may be struggling to seek help. So initially, when the rumors were coming out that, hey, I think Jay Graham's going to be, like, I think Saban's about to get rid of Jay Graham. Or I think Graham's going to be resigning. Or what, like, nobody knew what was going on. And then you see Graham release this statement on Twitter and then have a press conference and explain it himself, it was very interesting to see. I mean, the, the guy's only 45 years old. Sure. But it, mental health, like, it's it's it has gotten a lot more attention lately, and rightfully so. And I think it's a good thing that he was able to do this as opposed to just, because the life of an assistant coach, the constant traveling around, well, going yeah. back and forth, different no, it's jobs a, it's every a crap, year. It's a crap job. It pays well, yeah. but it's a crap job. And if you got a family... Like, that is, that is hardcore, man. And I wonder how many other assistant coaches are, are dealing with something similar, but they feel like they're trapped and they have to keep, you know, going from job to job to job. Well, but like, so many of them are trapped to the paycheck. Yeah. No, I mean, no, no, that's absolutely. the thing is they're highly compensated. Yeah, there are people and that can handle what, it. I mean, nobody takes a crappy job that, that, that doesn't, doesn't pay, pay well. Yeah. You just quit that job and go find another crappy job that doesn't pay well. Agreed. And you're always constantly striving to move, because I'm sure Jay Graham has aspirations to be a head coach one day. Yeah. Like, and these are the things that you have to go through as an assistant coach. But I, I'm glad that he came out and said something. Um, because if, if he had just resigned and everybody started wondering, you know, what's going on or whatever, I, I think this is good for him. I think it allows him a way to get back into coaching. I think it... Uh, I think it makes other coaches realize that, hey, like, we may be a little lonely, but, like, there are other people that are going through this. So, it, you see where I'm coming from with it? Mm. You're looking at me like I'm like I'm crazy. No, I just, I think the concept that my life sucks, but other people's life sucks that does the same thing I do, so it's okay. I'm just like, saying that's that never people. made me, I will tell you that other people's misery has never made me feel better about my misery. Okay. Like, I just, it just doesn't, it doesn't help me feel any better. Okay. I, I, like, I knowing see. this guy struggles with mental health issues doesn't make my crazy in my head any better at all. Okay. Okay. I mean, I guess it I makes me it, feel like, more normal, but it doesn't help it. I think people that know him, because I'm sure that he knows a ton of coaches. Sure he does. If there are other guys... That are going it, through similar things. What I can think of is it would give them the courage to step up. And, right. But the problem is is the requirements of the job and the responsibilities of the job, I I don't think it lends itself to being able to do the job and help yourself. You either have to say, I'm going to keep doing this job even though it's wearing on me this way and it's affecting me mentally and physically this way, or I'm going to step away and get help and take care of myself. I don't think there's a world in the way college athletes works right now. It's such a pressure cooker that you can do both. I do not think you can keep your job and do anything to mitigate any of that stress, especially if you're at, at the top of the food chain. Nick, Nick Saban is the worst person in the world to ever work for. You're going to win, but he's the hardest person in the world to ever work for. He's the most unagreeable person to ever work with. Especially if you are dealing with mental health issues. Yes. Like, because you are going to be ridden into the ground. I mean, like Jim Harbaugh are, is a pretty, 
difficult person to work with. Yeah. And coaches have quit working for Nick Saban to go work for Jim Harfall. It's true. Knowing yeah. they're not going to win, knowing that recruiting is going to be a million times harder, everything's going to be more difficult, the weather's going to suck, the recruiting's going to suck, we're going to get our brains beat in by Ohio State. All of these negatives, you know what? It ain't as bad as working for that guy, though. You may have a valid point. But that I, I think other coaches are dealing with this. At some point in time, they have to they have to either make the decision for themselves of I'm either going to stay in this field or I'm going to get help. Yeah. But I don't know I don't know that help can come and you stay in the field. Yeah, I don't know that he, I don't know that he necessarily does come back. I'm just saying this way. But if you there love no coaching, rumors. you know what you can do? You you can go coach college high school ball. Yes. You can go find a JUCO and and, and coach locally there. Like you can there still be involved in, yeah. in in football and still coach. Yeah, no, you can you can certainly do that. You won't make the paycheck. Nope, but, but that's you okay. Won't, but you won't have the responsibility. You'll be able to come home every night. That's right, every night. It depends on what you want out of this life. I'll tell you that. All right, very quickly, our FCS Week Six notes: Underdogs last week went sixteen and twelve against the spread. Still killing it. Eight wins outright. Two as double-digit dogs. Uh, you may think that scoring 45 points would be enough to win a ball game, right? Well, I, I, that all depends on who you're playing. Well, when Incarnate Word scores 45 points against Nickel State, that would not be close to enough. As a matter of fact, it's not even within four touchdowns. Uh, Nichols beat them 75-45 to 45 last Saturday. <laughs> that was a ridiculous beatdown. Um on top of that, Mercer, they would have had to it, double their forty-five to win the game. Oh yeah, I mean that's insane. That's, that's insane. insane. That's insane. Mercer upset number nine Chattanooga, thirty-five to twenty-eight. Uh, number eleven Delaware beat number eighteen Rhode Island. Delaware stays perfect on the year. The Blue Hens, um, thirty-five to twenty-one in that game. Good football program. Bobby Petrino strikes again. Missouri State beat number ten Southern Illinois last week, thirty to twenty-seven. But their game against another top ten opponent this week. Now, Missouri State, they are sitting at 4-1 and one right now. Like, they, they, are. they are moving towards playoff opportunity. That's 4-1 and one in the spring season. They were 0-3 in the fall, but it doesn't count. doesn't matter. Um, the game against North Dakota is canceled this weekend because of COVID issues at North Dakota. It seems calculated. I didn't say it. <laughs> COVID seems to be getting better everywhere else in the country. But North Dakota just found it. All of a sudden, North Dakota... North they just Dakota found it. Bob Petrino's showing up at the door, and they just found it. <laughs> just saying. Um, so, along with that, um, we can move into week seven now. We are we are good on all of this. And now let's move week seven, FCS. Write my time down here. Da, da, da. We've got five games that we're going to discuss. The lines are not out as of right now. No. I don't believe. SBRodds.com, not no. out. Okay. Not out on Monday night, but that's okay. We got analytical lines, and we're going to talk about them. Number one, the James Madison Dukes are 4-0. and They are headed to Richmond, Virginia to play against the Richmond Spiders, number 15 in the country. They are sitting at 3-0. and And look, James Madison got back on track last week. Got back on track. It's, the game is Saturday, April 3rd, 12 p.m. Eastern time uh, on Flow Sports. That's that $30 a month channel. Whatever. Yeah, no, that's the one I don't like. James Madison is favored analytically, metrically, whatever you want to call it, uh, by 7. 28 to 21, they're expected to win. They're number 2 in total defense. James Madison is number 11 in total offense. They got back on track last week against William & Mary, beat them 38 to 10 after a two-week pause due to some some COVID issues and games have been postponed or whatever. They came back out and rocked them. Richmond is number 10 in the country in total defense, but their offense has trouble scoring. While James Madison was messing around with some teams early on, yeah. I, I think they have hit their stride. I if if this line is seven, I think it's gonna go over. I think I think James Madison wins this one by more than seven. Yeah, they're they're you said the word, they're coming into their own. Yeah, they're starting to assert their dominance a little bit. They they have always been I say always, over the last they, yeah, eight to ten years, I was about they've to been say, number almost, two. Almost a decade they've been one of the powerhouse programs yep. in this conference. They they have gotten a national championship yeah. and the only other team in the last Eight years to get a national championship was North, North Dakota, Dakota State. State. So, uh, so that is who I would rock with there. James Madison minus seven. Uh, I would go. You know, I, I expect. And we're, we're guessing digits. that to be the line. Yeah, I'm guessing that's the line. We shall see. 
Uh, if it's anything less than that, yeah, for sure, well, yeah. on it. Uh, but I think they won by double digits. That's that's what I believe. Uh, moving on from there, we have got this is a big one. This is a big one. I might should have led with this one, but Dave is the number one team. But okay. the Dakota Marker rivalry, South Dakota State number four in the country, the Jackrabbits four and one. At number two, North Dakota State, the Bison are sitting at five and one. We have a top five matchup, my friends. That's right. Top five yes, matchup. Sir, we do. North Dakota State has won 12 of the last 14 in the rivalry. The Dakota Marker, man. College game day was there a couple years ago. I know. Big time. Big time. South Dakota State last beat North Dakota State in 2017. That was in Brookings. This one, however, this is at the home of the Bison. This is at the Fargo Dome. The analytics have this North Dakota State winning 24 to 20. Very close. Very close ball game. So and do you think the line will be a four point line? I I will tell you this: if North Dakota State is favored here, we think they're going to be. I I I assume they're going to be at home. Statistically, analytically, I don't believe they should be. So I was about to say, I'll take. If it's a field goal or bigger, which I think it will be a field goal or bigger, yeah, I'll, I'll take the Jackrabbits. I think so too. I think I would take them. Like they, they may lose. I think it'd be closer to a, a yeah, three point they might, game. They might, they might lose the game. Hell, they might lose the bet. Yeah, I'll just, take my chances with the dog just in this fight at, right here. Looking at stats, looking at the way that the two teams have played, I I think South Dakota State's a better football team. Now I don't know that I would have ever thought said this, that. But, yeah, but this North Dakota State team is not the North Dakota State team that we've watched over the last decade. However, they have been improving in the last. No, they're few getting weeks. better. No, no, no. this not. They're still a really good football yes, team. Yes, very much so. But, but they can get got, and and they, they don't normally get got. They absolutely can. And when you've been the little brother for a long time, getting beat up by big brother, you show a little bit of weakness. Yep, you got it. In, in it. South Dakota State, I, I like this Jackrabbits team. I do too. I like them a lot. Uh, that game is also on Saturday, April third, at three p.m. Eastern time on ESPN Plus. I was about to say, is that going to be on the U? That is uh, that is ESPN Plus. Yeah. Now, now they they have in recent weeks moved games to the, ESPN yeah. U, ESPN Two, whatever. I was just about to say they have. So, been, I've been I've caught several of them on yeah, the U. Keep keep an eye on it. Yeah. Keep an eye on it. But as of right now, it is scheduled for ESPN Plus. I think this would be a good one to move up. I think so. It's a, a top five. Uh, the problem is, is they've got the NCAA hockey going on. That's going to stay on the U. Yeah, probably. That so. was on the U this week. Well, what about ESPN too? There's nothing else going on as far as I know. Uh, the uh, final four for the women's yeah, tournament. The women's tournament's going to be on, so it's not. It's still going to be on the plus. And you know what? I think the final four for the women is on Sunday, though, isn't it? Because I don't think they would be competing with uh, with the men's final. Well, they're four. competing with the men tonight. Well, yeah, that's tonight. Why the hell would they change it then? Uh, you got a you got a valid point. Valid you think, point. You think they're smart? No, you think not people particularly. People make those decisions that make a lot of money are actually intelligent. Not particularly. No. Yeah, I don't no, either. no. 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 All right. Uh, moving on from there. Number nine, the Eastern Washington Eagles are sitting at three and one. Uh, they lost their first game to Idaho and have won every game yep. since. At number eleven, UC Davis Aggies, three and one on the season. This one's on Pluto TV, four p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. UC Davis, number ten in yards per game. Eastern Washington, number two in yards per game. So these are two teams I haven't watched a lot at all. Both of them are top seven in scoring. Probably need to watch them more. Um, neither defense is very good. So this game, Listen, uh, they, I, I was checking scores on that nickel state. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Neither of those defenses were any good either, to say the least. To say the least. Uh, it's so the the analytics say that this one will be thirty four to thirty one Eastern Washington. Okay. Whatever the number is, I'm going over. Yeah, just bet. This is just a blind. Over just bet. bet the over. Yeah, whatever the total is, bet the over. What do they think the spread's going to be? Three. That's not big enough to just blindly take the I mean, dog. It's number nine at number eleven. Yeah, that's not big enough to blindly take the dog. But I might still take it. I mean, it's entirely it, it, well, especially because UC Davis is going to be the dog. Well, yeah, and they're really good, and and they're at home, and they so. score a lot. Well, and I they say both they're really score. good. They're yeah. going to score a lot. They both score a lot. They both score a lot of points. So that is uh, that is the way that I would take that one. Uh, moving forward again, we are moving to the fourth game. game. Oh, fourth game. Fourth game, number 16, the Villanova Wildcats. Typically known as Jay Wright's team, but not in this instance. Saturday, April 3rd, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, Flow Sports. They are playing at the Maine Bears. Maine is 2-1 and one on the season. I, I'm saying it, Maine, like, uh, like Memphis, Maine. Like, aren't I? Like, well, that's how you say it. Is it is that is it not is it Maine or Ma- like? 
It's Maine. I don't know any I other way of saying it. <laughs> Every time I, I think Memphis just thinking. changed the way we say man. It, it's entirely possible. Yeah, but you don't say Maine. the state man. So State's the Maine, Maine Bears, Maine Bears, the, who who once upon a time beat Mississippi State when Mississippi Sylvester State was there. Um, at Mississippi State, yes. Uh, Villanova is one and one on the season. Oh, Maine is home two and, and one. Contract. Villanova has a good offense, and the defense is kind of pitiful. But you know, okay, they're they're still one and one on the season. They uh, they lost a game to uh, Albany. Albany. Uh, Maine, their offense has improved drastically after getting drubbed in their first game, thirty-seven to nothing loss to Delaware. They've scored thirty-eight and thirty-five in the last two weeks. The defense actually worse than Villanova's, so I expect points here. I don't expect a lot of stops. The actual uh, analytics right now has Maine favored thirty-one to twenty-nine. Yeah. I know that the only thing I know about this Maine team is they. They used to be kind of good. Used to be. They're pretty good but this year. that was several years ago. They're, they're pretty good this year. They've, they've won two straight, um, and they are projected favorites here at home over the number 16 team in the country. If they're dogs here, I am all over Maine. Oh, no. If they're if Maine is catching points in this game, I'm taking them. Yes. The Bears. I assume they're a pretty good team. The Maine Bears. I like it. We just got backdoored. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Did you All see right. that? No. What? Oregon State. What, they lose by seven? or They lose by six. Oh, my God. Houston, what are you doing? <laughs> I know it's a college right. football show. So we're good. gambling on college basketball. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, and Houston was up. When we started this show, I was like, I Houston don't care that I'm missing 17. the game because they're up by almost 20, and this is going to be a route, and so I don't care. Let's go to work. And Just, I was happy to go to work. And just ridiculous. And my phone's blowing up, and I somebody <laughs> takes me the score, and it just scrolled across the phone. And I thought <laughs> maybe they're wrong. Maybe they're wrong. I don't know. Maybe maybe something happened. Maybe they're lying. It's possible that would ESPN s- lies all the time. Well, it wouldn't surprise me that my friends would know they were recording and saying, "I'm just going to send him a bunch of random crap that's not true." It's entirely possible. That, I mean, I, I know the people you hang out with. You hang out with me, like I, <laughs> number nineteen. Let's go. The Murray State Racers. That's Murray, Kentucky. That's right. We know all about Murray, yeah, Kentucky. My boy Ja went there. My, my good friend Ja. Ja Raff. That's right. Saw him at the Memphis Zoo yesterday, as a matter of fact. You uh, can ja hang Morant. Out with I'll hang out with Ja Morant. <laughs> Murray State, known typically as a basketball school, yes. is sitting at 5 0 this Are year. Are they really? 5 0 this season. Oh, now they have not played. You could have taken a lot of my money to just start guessing what their record would have been. They have not played anybody that's that's really really yeah, good. I just, I just wouldn't have known. They've that. won several close games. I would assume they were bad. Uh, they are at Austin P this weekend. Uh, three oh, and this two. Is the guy we like Austin P is three and two okay. so far in the spring season. Uh, they have scored. Austin P has scored the seventh most touchdowns in all of FCS. Is this a uh, rivalry by any chance? Those these yes. two they, they can't be too far from one another. It's, Chattanooga it's, and, it's in uh, the same conference. Yeah. Uh, not not Chattanooga. Austin P is Austin. Uh, is right outside Nashville, right? Oh yeah, right outside Nashville. That's right. That's yep. So Nashville and Murray, Kentucky, not not too far. They can't away. Can't be too far away. Uh, and they're in the same conference, like I said. So it's it's they they play each other fairly regularly. Uh, it is Saturday, April third, at three p.m. Eastern time on ESPN Plus. Austin P favored to win this one, twenty seven to twenty four. So favored by three points. Uh, analytically, that's not enough points. I don't think it is either. Austin P, I believe, is. Significantly it, better. They're, they're they're improving a lot because remember they they lost out of the gate. That's right. And and they I mean they just beat top ten Jacksonville State on the road last week, and now they're at home against the team that's ranked. I think they're going to show up for this one. Scotty Waldron, I think, is going to show up on this one. So hour and forty five minute drive. There you go. Not bad. Uh, Murray State is Close. statistically average. They are five and zero against not great competition. Um, the issue with Austin P is. While while they score a bunch of touchdowns, uh, their defense ninety six in in scoring against. Well, they hired an offensive genius that's Most only certainly. three years old to come coach them. Yeah, who knows a lot about offense? So he put not a lot all the talent on offense. So that is that is the way that it goes. I I, I still think Austin P is going to put up a bunch of points here. I think if, they're going to. If score the a bunch. number is three, I will definitely be. Lay in the points with Austin P. I think Austin P wins by at least a touchdown. Yeah, I, I, if it's a short number, I'll take it. If it's not. Uh, I might throw a little love on there for Ja. It's entirely possible. You think he'll be at the game? 
No. I was just joking. No. I was trying to think if the Grizzlies were playing this weekend. I don't think he knows that Murray State has a football team. Yes, he does. He loves that place. I mean, he does, for sure. But I know he loves the basketball team. I, he's coming over this weekend. <laughs> he's going to watch the tournament with me. All right. We were getting out of here. I think you guys have been fantastic. Thank you for watching along with us. Even in the middle of the NCAA tournament, you guys have tuned in uh, and and made it worthwhile. Yeah, we, we appreciate, appreciate it. That. We do appreciate it. Yes. So if you would like to keep things rolling, jump in the comments. Let us know what your picks for this weekend are. Let us know as well what you like about the show, what you don't, what topics you want us to hit on. If there are any hypotheticals that you would like for us to discuss, like, I don't know, is LSU a better job than Notre Dame? We can always... Talk about that one. I am but, curious the answer what other people... I just kind of assume that it's a given. That's Man. kind of what I think. So if you would tell Maybe us I'm your wrong. opinion on this, we would certainly like to hear it. I did grow up in a, an all very Catholic home. So my... You... My, you, my upbringing <laughs> could grossly... It, it might have something to do with some it. of this. Maybe so. I think so. I think so. Um, you think? Yeah, maybe just a little bit. We're going to talk about it next I week. Think, I think Notre Dame's better. We're, we're going to talk about it next week. And okay. and maybe if you guys would like to jump in, tell us what the best jobs in college football are, and give us your reasoning behind it. We would love to see it in the comments. You can also tweet us. I'm at Gary WCE. I'm at Crispy Giannini. I'm going to share and this poll out. I think that's a good idea. You you share one, and I'll share one, and we'll see what the difference is. Yeah, because you're going to get a lot more people than me. That's uh, You never know about my that. Nine, my nine friends will... I'll will, share yours out, too. They'll all vote for LSU, I'm sure. <laughs> And, of course, like the video for us, subscribe to the channel, etc. Oh, you can email us. I'm Gary at winningcureseverything.com. And I'm Chris at winningcureseverything.com. We like to make this very, very simple for you guys. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment, share it out, tell your friends about it. Make sure that you visit sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. Is there anything else happening in college football that we need to discuss? No, not right now. Wonderful. Well, with that said, for sportsbookreview.com, I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And we will see you all again next week.